They try, tend to play in open ground and use a lot of resources early. And that's going to be a massive shatter. That is an enormous earth shatter. Four people knocked down, but the Titans strike back. The How did they do it? The counter shatter was there. Self-destruct from the Titans too, pushing everybody in the shock out of position. Now the grab comes in, and there's not much defense for this. Bumper oh. knocked back as he tries to charge. That saved Rascal's life, actually. He did, but Super needs saving too. Self-destruct. Oh, okay, Titans. Soman suit down. How in the world did they lose him? That's crazy. Slime out of the way too. Bumper gets the kill on Super, oh but it's my. all caught right now. It's going to be 20 seconds. Everyone and happy Tuesday to all you fine internet citizens. Welcome to Esports and 30. I'm AJ Fry. This handsome man right here is Ron Renanthra Lee, and you're here because for the next 30 minutes we're going to be talking all about Owls, the Overwatch League. Either that, or you misclicked, in which case, uh, why don't you stay a while and uh, listen as we talk about the incredibly amazing Stage Two playoff action. It was hotter than King's Landing, Ron. King's Landing? It's a reference that you won't understand, but I know about King's Row. Mind. That's one of the maps. Is, this, is King's Landing Overwatch. from a different game? It's from a. Uh, so we're mind. straying from script, is what you're saying. I just took us on a. I'm telling know, the boss. I'm going to tell the boss. You should you, keep your job. The boss is listening. This is being produced right now. You're right. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Continue. I got nothing. Okay, well, fine. Uh, let's move <laughs> on. Uh, before we welcome our very special guest and friend of the show, Alex Sword uh, Sinkowitz, uh, let's get fired up with these highlights from the Stage 2 playoffs. Shield trying to live, trying to get this point. Grab comes in off the side, Libero going lower and lower, but he's not dead yet. The beat comes in from Big Oscar, and that's gonna be picked up. The K is gone, one that's after the it. other, they all fall. Roar charges in from the side, manages to find one, but he is all by himself with a baby Eva, and Jonek is taking names left and right. They're gonna get the point, they're gonna get the series, and YXL. Jackals of damage, and there's a Hangzhou spark just handed him out. Shot after shot and hit point by hit point, the Spitfire are cut down to size. And now it's going to be a transcendence for Bedoshin on the point to try and keep this thing alive. But they just get handed an L. They will not join that illustrious club. Oh, this one's over. This one is absolutely over. Style points going to the Vancouver Titans. And as clean as it gets, the one death, the only one for the Vancouver Titans. Where Bastion can turn into a turret. Oh, no! Turret the Gulf of Violet. Oh! No! Two Violet! Normally a support player, now playing the Sniper and Widowmaker, and he's found two. The Shock are playing this weird composition because they're just here to have fun, and they know all they had to do was find the one kill. Still stalling out, getting themselves more percentage. Slime somehow pulls it out on a Jonak. Slime is still alive somehow is what, what is ridiculous about this. That guy just never says die. And now you've got five alive here for the Titans. And they are still trying to stabilize. New York I mean, five back here. I mean, Jonak is gone, but now we've lost Mono. That can make all the difference. Libero is down next without the tank there to keep him alive. And we are going to have Nene throwing in the grab, but it might be too little too late. I can't believe how Slime and just carried that fight. Open ground and use a lot of resources early. And that's going to be a massive shatter. That is an enormous earth shatter. Four people knocked down, but the Titans strike back. The how did they do it? The counter shatter was there. Right, sound barrier, shock, re-engaging both teams using that Lucio ult to get the extra shots. Bumper so low, but he's going to go. Oh, oh the Janu, the counter, self-destruct, super play. And they finally break through here. Bob another Duncan grab? Back on the Janu. Yeah, another grab from Sinatra. Self-destruct from the Titans too, pushing everybody in the shock out of position. Now the grab comes in, and there's not much defense for this. Bumper oh. knocked back as he tries to charge. That saved Rascal's life, actually. It did, but Super needs saving too. Self-destruct. Oh, okay, Titans. Soman suit down. How in the world did they lose him? That's crazy. Slime out of the way too. Bumper gets the kill on Super, oh but it's my. all caught right now. It's going to be 20 seconds. The Titans, they need to scramble. Shock might have just done it. Summon Sue knocked down. He's taken out soon. Janu down as well. And the Shock, they may have done it. Now Only Bumper right remaining. Hawksalt just trying to stay on the point. But that's going to be it. The grab from Sinatra comes in. And the Shock have done it. They are your stage two champions.
Yep, the shock took it home, and damn, they earned it. About as close as a flawless stage as we could have asked for in the OWL so far, anyway. Now to talk about the shock's performance and so, so much more, we're welcoming back Mr. Alex Sword Simkovich. I said it better this time. Welcome to the couch, alongside Mr. Ron here. Yes. You guys, uh, old friends, ready to geek out about yeah. Overwatch? Oh, nice yeah, to see yeah, you again. Yeah. Nice yeah. to see you, yeah. Totally not rehearsed. <laughs> no, <laughs> totally, definitely not. No. Totally <laughs> genuine handshake. Dynamic, We didn't meet you know. in the back room earlier and, and or anything. First time. Long this time. time I actually got to actually shake his hand. You know, I mm. missed it a few times. But Did you do that? Oh, yeah, you know. I'll do it again. Good measure. There we go. There we go. Can we talk Overwatch now? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, I was expecting the Titans to uh, actually take this one out, uh, but then again, it's the Canadian bias in you. It's the smooth brain of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wrinkles. Uh, everyone right. seemed to think Shock would definitely win this one going into it. Were you guys surprised, or was this pretty much exactly how you expected this to play out? Hmm. Well, honestly, to be honest, it goes back to stage one, right? Where Shock and Vancouver were at it, at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. yeah. This time they were able to get the revenge. They were able to be very clean, I would say, overall with Series 2, 4 to 2. And they made a statement. So now it's all about Vancouver. Can they bring it back for stage three? Yeah, right. I mean, we, we had Mineral on last week and he was very, very confident. He's like, you know what, Shock, I have a good chance to win this. And, you know, you and me were like, no, Vancouver's got it. But, you know, I guess I guess that makes two smooth brains in the office there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the Titans were thus far undefeated. Obviously, the Shock have, uh, have come together. The They've stage, improved yeah. their game. Mm -hmm. What was it? What were those magical ingredients? What was the recipe that they followed to find this success? I think aggression. A big thing in this new Goats patch is aggression. Aggression. Uh, you see a lot of teams, for example, Nixel and Gladiators, they played a much slower GOAT to more passive GOAT. And with the new Lucio changes and Brig and all those other kind of changes to the GOAT's formula, mm. you see that teams that aggress first, the teams that play very well uh, and aggressive, usually are winning these fights. And a lot of it comes down to the Reinhardt, how long he can survive. Super insanely clutch player, mm -hmm. huge for that team. Mm. Yeah, I really I really agree with that. I think a lot of people look at Bumper and you know, he's kind of garnered the stereotype of like, he's so aggressive, you yeah. know, he's like always in there. But statistically, he actually takes the less, uh, the least amount of damage of all the main tanks in the league. So he's just really good at ping pong and kind of going in and going out. Um, but I guess when Wait, we go to this final... Wouldn't him statistically taking the least amount of damage potentially indicate that he just dies so much that he's not around to take that much damage? I, I like mean, his you, team... You could, you could look at the, the footage and make that argument as well, but I, I think the key is mainly that if we're looking at teams that execute aggression better, it's like Sword said, uh, Shock really has aggression nailed down. Whereas mm. I think, um, despite the, the the normal stereotype of Vancouver, they, they play a, a lot more balanced game and know mm. when to push their buttons right. And mm. it's, it goes back to what Ron was saying before with ping-ponging, right? They do a very good job with ping-ponging the aggro between multiple members, multiple of the tanks, and even the Brigitte, to right. where they get that max value with cooldowns and healing, which really brings the ghosts together. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have to give them credit for you know building on everything, bringing us to this moment. But we also got to credit one of the key players on the team, Sinatra. Yeah. I mean, as much yeah. as everyone praises Super and the whole dynamic between Bumper versus Super and that whole thing, but Sinatra, you were telling me about these amazing, incredibly detailed plays that yeah. he was calling with, with involving Troy. blocking yeah. trance. How does this even work? Yeah, so the way Transcendence works is, despite it looking like a like an area of effectability, right. it operates on line of sight. So if uh, Zenyatta can't see you directly, you don't actually receive the healing. Right. So certain abilities in the game, like Winston's Bubble or Zarya's Projected Barriers, if you are standing in front of them with one of those on you and blocking the line of sight between your Zenyatta and whoever his ally is, they don't actually receive the healing. Wow. So Choi Hobian would do a really good job of when the trance would go off, flying between, uh, you know, like Twilight, for example, and whoever he's trying to heal, and then Sinatra would give him the barrier, meaning whoever he was trying to heal wouldn't receive that, that massive uh, speedy heal. And there's a point where he did it on Watchpoint Gibraltar, uh, doing that bubble combination really, really well and blocking off trance from three people. Uh, nailing him in that fight. It was, he did it a couple of times over the course of the entire series. Mm. That's a really hard play to coordinate consistently. Well, For sure, I agree. shows you why they deserve the win. Uh, but finally losing their first time uh, in their entire time here in the Overwatch League, the Titans. So does this mean it's time for them to entirely rebuild? Are they going to wipe the <laughs> team? Are they going to make some yeah, trades? Yeah, scrap it. It's time to scrap the entire team, you know. What, what are uh, the Titans ultimately going to do now, Alex? Is it really just like continue on because this was, you know, just one loss in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, honestly, Titans have nothing really to feel bad about. It's great to see that they have someone to challenge them, right? That's 
a really big thing that was a really bad thing last uh, year right. in Owl 2018, which was Nixon was dominating all the time. They had no one to contest them, and then they got comfortable, they got complacent, and then they ended Sandbagged up falling. a little too hard, right? A little bit too hard yeah. towards that stage four. But now Vancouver has someone to keep up with them tab for tab, right? So this yeah. is a really good thing. As long as they stay composed, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, I'm sure that Vancouver, or, yeah, I'm sure Vancouver will do a really good job moving forward. Yeah, and I'm not entirely sure if they play each other to the next stage, but if they don't, uh, I can see these two really building a good friendship in terms of scrims because, you know, they, they Again, this rivalry and this competition is healthy to breed, uh, you know, stronger players. You know, right. Doomfist's philosophy, you know, conflict is uh, what's necessary for people to evolve and be their best selves. So mm. um, we, we saw the meme with Super and him being like so dejected after the loss. Yeah. We saw Bumper, you know, like this hitting his hands, right? Yeah. But they hug at the end of the day. They're, I think both these teams, if they uh, continue to play this well and no one else can really challenge them, these two will continue to elevate and even get further ahead of the pack if there's mm. no big changes to meta. Well, let's move on to a team that's definitely elevated their game. They were <laughs> consistently losing in Stage 1, somehow found their way into the playoffs in Stage 2. The Shanghai Dragons actually ended up, what, what did they pick off, uh, one map from the San Francisco Shock yeah, before? Started, yeah. started, was it on Oasis or something? Yes. Yeah, they got that first win and ended that streak right away. Yeah, that was, were you guys shocked to see that they did shocked. this against the Shock? I'm sorry. I see what you did there, okay. Were yeah, you yeah, surprised? Yeah. Were you caught off guard? <laughs> uh, I would say, yeah, definitely a lot of people I'm sure weren't expecting Shanghai to pull off a map specifically against Shock, right? Shock has been looking like a juggernaut, same with Vancouver. Yeah. But Shanghai, really credit to them. They stuck to their guns. They didn't say, okay, we got to learn Ghost. We got to try to be Ghost. They said, you know what? Forget about it. We have our own style. Play around Ding, play Somber Ghost, play Pharaoh Goats, right? Play all these different variations that play to our strengths and try to utilize it, try to win from there. And they looked really well with it. And honestly, I feel like if they didn't play Shock or even Vancouver, they probably would have been able to move on to the semifinals. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I think, you know, a lot of people like are looking at Shanghai being like, okay, they, they rebuild and they're better, but how good are they really? And this match against Shock really solidified them on the upper end of the table for me. Uh, I'm not going to say they're anywhere near top two. Uh, there is a sizable gap there for sure. But but I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if later on by like stage four, we can see them hovering in like top five. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to another team that is, uh, you know, climbing the boards as well. Uh, the Spark, uh, winning one for China, going uh, three to one against London. Uh, we had Mineral on the show last week saying London would ultimately maybe make it to like semifinals. I didn't believe them for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's Spark, you know, with the upset. So why was Spark able to pull this together, guys? Well, I would probably say, honestly, London, they haven't found the formula. They're still really inconsistent. I was really surprised going into this stage that London wanted to play Bird Ring on the break, because especially since stage one, he struggled a lot on it. He tried Zarya, didn't really work. I was impressed with Guard playing the break for them, but at the end of the day, like they're not they're not finding the mesh to teamwork together in GOATS. And Hongju, they made a really good stylistic change with their main tank, right? They put mm. in Gaj. Gaju, Gushue, thank Gushue. you. And what ended up happening was they played the super aggressive style where before they just played very slow. They played to try to pick people off that way. But you saw the aggression really go against London. And they had no, they had no idea what to do and they just crumbled. Yeah, I think like you know he's he's really known for his Winston play. And we saw that in full effect here. And I think you know London, uh, like it, it's really weird because we say they're always so inconsistent and that matches up with what we see in their roster, right? It's yeah. like, how do you expect to be this amazing team that's consistent all the time if you're always changing who's on what, like one week to the next, it works one week, doesn't work another week, and you seem to give up? It's They, they don't really have a long-term plan, I think, and they're still figuring things out halfway through the season, which is really, really bad. Well, what is it then that divides these two teams? Does it seem like Spark actually has a bit more of a, a plan in terms of improving and moving forward versus London where it seems so haphazard with who they're throwing in there? I mean, I would personally say so. I think, you know, they, they had, although uh, Sasen, who is one of their players that was stuck in Visa Hell for a while, but now that he's uh, kind of cleared of that and they come in uh, from the start, they were like, okay, well, he, we're going to have these guys play these things and these formations. Uh, and Gushu, although he didn't start, he was splitting time in the uh, first stage now that he's on more permanently for stage two um they've kind of been like okay we know who we want to restart now moving forward um and i think they have the foresight right yeah. whereas london i i don't think they have just about any amount of foresight pretty much yeah i would agree with that i definitely think that london should be worried moving forward into stage three if they really want to be a better team they need to get this teamwork down better and they need to understand what they want to do for this long-term goal and either mm. say you know what this is what we're going to do we're going to go just like stage one we're going to prepare for the finals we're going to get ready to win it all or they have to be ready to say okay this is the best roster we can get right now this is what we should do moving forward where spark has already identified that and they said hey this is this is the best formation that we can have in this meta we should just run this all the time and be ready to play play this style that really suits us. Yeah, agreed. Does the fact that they're last stage champions 
way heavy on their heads looking at this current lineup of teams like Shock and Titans just being so dominant in the second season and London obviously just struggling. Is that just further weight on their shoulders going like, we should be the best team, but we're so not these days. I mean, they're, they're human at the end of the day, right? Like a lot of these players come in and the, the eSports lifestyle, as you know, you and me have both experienced, is extremely stressful, right? Nice. It's not uncommon to see people burn out. Um, and a lot of it stems from, uh, again, this weight of expectations. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not easier, like, being champions, coming back and having this, like, really rough patch so especially when you got like the titans who are this brand new team yeah. doing yeah. so well and i mean the shock not their first season team as well but they've just really come together yeah. and gelled mm -hmm. as a young team Incredibly there's no excuses for london basically so they're yeah. not like it's either we have to do this or we don't and right now they aren't they're yeah. losing their own game essentially yes, exactly. well let's uh, talk about the gladiators who were doing quite well uh but uh ended in disappointment against the nyxl um what are your thoughts on the gladiators what do they got to do moving forward now i think on Honestly, the big thing that I would say when looking at the Nixle versus Gladiator match was it was a really yawnful game. <laughs> Truthfully speaking, I saw two teams playing slow style goats, similar to what they should have done in stage one, trying to mirror it here. And Nixle is just a better team overall. They've been together longer. They seem to have been playing that play style before where they sat back and they looked to capitalize on mistakes, where Gladiator was trying to do that and play slowly around the K. And you, we saw what happened, right? Nixle capitalized on mistakes a lot better mm. and they were able to move forward into a better kind of area. I think Glides need to figure out their team play. They need to figure out how to play around uh, and play in certain this meta right now. And if it moves into a 2-2 meta, maybe it'll favor them better, but they really need to identify who they need to play around and identify a style to play mm. and stick to it. So yeah. Alex is saying that Roar was more yawning than roaring this time. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Ron? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I think like a lot of times Roar is also like ha uh, caught out often. He's bailed out by Decay, and Decay's uh, definitely worth the money. I think he's an amazing player. Uh, and when he's like on the ball, he can really get the, the game rolling for them. But because so many other people on the team are making small, minute mistakes, mm -hmm. and he's having to bail them out so much, he can't really use bubbles in a way that let them play aggressively, because he's like, well, you're about to die. Let me hold up a second. Oh, you're about to die. Okay, well, we need to wait a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And those tiny things add up. Those seconds add up and add up and add up. And every, mm -hmm. uh, what is it, like eight seconds on barrier, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like much. But to, to get your team to like compose themselves and reset in a way they can actually move in as a unit it's like, it takes a lot of coordination that they just don't have for some reason um, and we even saw their head coach Deepay like go to Twitter put like a little twit longer post saying you know like I, I'm the head coach of this team I know we really have uh, bad showings during playoffs mm -hmm. and we're not exactly sure not why that is yet just bad like never winning a game in playoffs yeah, yeah. yeah but they make playoffs at least so he's like you yeah. know why is it that we can get here but we're always so, so close to so far. We yeah, we yeah. crumble when we cut there. And I think what Ron's saying with how they manage their cooldowns, how they support Roar is a really big thing with them, right? And the big thing shows in their team fights. If you look at the mid-game team fights against Nixle, a lot of the times Nixle's more oriented. They, they know what they want to do. They're organized. Where Gladiators, they're going for chaotic mid-fights, and it shows that they just really don't know how to push together as a team and utilize right. these cooldowns in a proper way, like Ron's pointed out. Mm. Yeah, if you're going to play chaotic style, you might as well go full Chengdu and just play like 3 or 4 DPS. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so what if you were coaching this team how do you coach that element of when when the fight's breaking out when it's just pure chaos like what motivated like how do you break that down do you watch vods and just go like frame by frame kind of explaining what everything should have been and hope that those lessons stick in the minds of your players i think a lot of it when it comes down to like playing on stage and stuff like that when you have six dudes uh, if you practice one way and you get to stage, sometimes it's just a different beast entirely. Mm. I don't know what their scrim record is, right? Maybe they're really organized in scrims, but it seems like when you get on stage and the stakes are high, mm. things crumble. I hear, I hear, you know, good things from other teams about gladiators and scrims. You know, they seem better today. They seem like yeah. on a good day they could really be top four, or top three even. Um, you know, they're dominant when it matters, or sorry, they're dominant when it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. And then <laughs> it's scrim bucks. Exactly, scrim bucks. And they, eventually, like maybe they're just like the big plan is they're waiting for like the stage four final or whatever, and then they, they cash all them in, and it's like, okay, now we finally win one. It's really <laughs> right. dramatic, right? Um, I would approach my players and say, you know, we, we need a dominant voice, right? We need a clear direction that's that's organized beforehand. Uh, we need to drill these sort of things, because mm. if, like, but that's kind of what they're doing. Like, at least from what I'm hearing, they're drilling, and it, like, maintains throughout practice, and they get on stage, and it falls apart. Yeah. Damn. Well, a team that fell apart, uh, but we wouldn't have expected any less when you're going up against the Vancouver Titans. The Dallas Fuel, uh, yeah, they've they've made it a long way. Obviously, being in the playoffs this game. time around, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. After that Homestead, pretty awesome, uh, good, uh, Very emotional, yeah, good motivation into this stage. But they couldn't uh, pull it together against the Titans. Will this be a team that we see uh, as being, you know, fearsome and dominant in this next stage? I think it depends on their schedule. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit into Dallas here, and I think they had a little bit of an easier schedule this stage around compared to the first stage. I 100% agree. I, I like great. I love Note pickup. Note was a fantastic pickup for them to trade with RCK, but at the same time, they need to Id identify. They have a similar problem that Gladiators have, but they're just not as better mechanically, I would say, than Gladiators. So they try to go into these fights, they get into the mid fight, and then it's like, what do we do? Go chaotic. You look at the fights and you see how they play around OGE, OGE gets no support. He always goes in, he's always holding up a shield, he's never able to swing, he's never able to take space properly, and it just shows that the entire team plays super scared and they just send OGE out to dry every right. single time. So I really hope that Dallas, if they are going into this ghost meta, they understand that and they look to fix those problems. They have been looking to increase and become a better team steadily as the stages go on, but I want to see the improvement much faster at a much drastic page. Well, yeah. one element that will obviously change things up is the uh, promotion of uh, Trill from Team Envy to the full roster. Yeah. So how is that going to mix things up? I mean, glad. I mean, I'm sure you're glad to see another Australian in the league, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, having Trill there is kind of a question mark for me because he's an amazing player. His ball is actually really stand out, right? He's he's an awesome guy too. Um, OGE is probably one of the stronger parts of the Dallas roster. Yeah, so, I agree. like, I'm questioning whether or not they're going to split time or whatever. Like. The, to add on to the thing you said about Note, um, he's a really consistent player. He always he, he's not a huge playmaker by any means, but he's the rock of the team. He's that anchor, and he mm. tries his best to do for OGE. Yeah. But Diva alone can only do so much. Exactly. Like Goats is an entire six-man unit, mm. and if uh, you know Note's doing his part to give OGE resources. Uh, and you know, OG wants to make these plays, but no one else is helping. That's why it seems like they're crumbling, right? Exactly. So maybe it's like they don't want to play that sort of style where you give so many resources to your main tank, and maybe that's why they're trying out Trill. I don't know, we'll have to see, but it could be um, something we see in the future where they might be swapping up their style. Yeah, mm. fair enough. Well, uh, that's it for the, the playoff breakdown. Let's look at some of the other teams. And who do you guys think need to make some changes in order to maybe earn themselves a spot in the playoffs moving forward? We've seen some big ones already with yeah. Valiant and Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen a lot of that. And um, so for those on the audience that do not know, uh, Valiant have recently acquired McGravy, Fact Fiction, and Shax. Uh, from the Mayhem Academy uh, in exchange. We've been talking so much about the Mayhem Academy. Yeah, no, I love, I love you're happy to see Shaxx back up there. In dude, the league, I'm buddy. so proud of Shaxx. Shaxx is, Shaxx is like an awesome guy, super funny, quiet kid with uh, quite the wrist. But, um, you know, they, they traded those three, those three guys who are all really, really awesome dudes, um, great players for Fate, who, although is a good main tank, you're trading, you know, fate for three dudes so there must have been something there sweet in the deal perhaps because otherwise it seems like uh you know mayhem got fleeced or something yeah I, at the same time though i would also say that they that's what they need i feel like florida do need a better main you're tank. saying swan isn't good i'm saying Say i'm looking at swan look at i'm saying camera. i'm looking at swan and man <laughs> swan is not delivering he he's probably the worst main tank within the league right now Ooh, worst and main tank. truthfully speaking they need a leader and it sounds like what Florida is lacking is a leader, and I really do believe Fate is that leader that can lead them. And they picked up Byram as well from NRG yeah. to uh, support Flex Roll. I think that's a great thing to do as I well. I don't know how much I'm on the Byram train, though. I mean, Hago, Hago is great. I think Hago was one of the stronger parts of that mm -hmm. roster. I don't think that like switching Hago and Byram will solve any sort of issues. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm probably looking at it in a vacuum, obviously. I don't know team dynamic over there with the Koreans, and I don't yeah. know how much, like, maybe him and, and Fate, like, knew each other. Maybe there's some benefit there. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, do at, at the end of the day, do I think whether or not these new pieces will fix the Flora roster? I definitely do not. Yeah, I want to see a little bit more from them as well. I want to see what they do for the CPS. I love BQB. He does a great job. Cyclear, definitely not amazing the mix. Widow. He's an amazing Widow, but he's not ready for this meta. He is not made for this meta. So they need to pick up a DPS. Yeah, That's not more, a great break. Yeah, more <laughs> flexible, more versatile, right? And then the off tank. Zephyr, we hear time and time again, great in scrims. He's a god. Goes into matches, nothing. <laughs> Yeah. They needed a better off tank, and I'm looking forward to see what kind of changes they have because they did tease that they were looking for a new off tank and mm -hmm. that they were picking up some DPS players as well. Yeah. Mm. So I'm sure we'll see a lot more Twitter news after today, like always, because yeah. we film on a Tuesday. <laughs> all the news comes out on a yeah, Tuesday. News is always on Wednesdays yeah. with the Overwatch. We'll wrap and be like, oh, they picked up everyone from Vancouver <laughs> or so something crazy. Who are your predictions then? What are the teams that are going to be making changes other than the ones that we've obviously <laughs> talked about that have been announced? Because, I mean, there's a lot of rumbling that Boston needs to change up, <laughs> Toronto as well. Other teams? Ooh. I think if you might have seen Don't the leak. meme on Reddit. Don't no, leak. definitely no leaks. But if you see the meme on Reddit, apparently in Korea, there's a giant meme where it's like, there's a traffic light in the bottom tier three. Yeah, 
Paris. Paris. No, it's Washington. Washington. Oh, yeah, Washington. Then you have Florida. Florida. Then you have Houston Valley. Outlaws. Or Houston, yeah. So right. I really want to see Houston make some changes. They haven't made some changes in quite some time for staff and players. It's they, the budget, man. They really need to change stuff, though. If they want to be competitive, then they need to change it. If yeah. they want to focus on marketing, all the power to them. They can do yeah. whatever they want, but they got to be ready to continuously lose games. As for DC, I like the change with Arc. They need more, though. They definitely need a lot more, or they have to hold out and wait for the say where they're like, I'm versatile roster, 2-2-2, two, 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 that's our meta. Mm -hmm. If that's what they want to do, then they just got to hold out maybe till next year and see what happens. They're slowly getting more and more Koreans, and they recently made some changes on the financial side and the, and the upper tiers with, mm -hmm. um, uh, is it Grant? I forgot yeah, his name, Grant. but yeah, he's like, hopefully he and the rest of their team can make some, some changes uh, with Kate leaving. Um, there's definitely a vacuum there for m someone else to take a leadership position. Yeah. Um, I just hope the direction they go in is a good one. I, I have not been sold on uh, Washington's direction thus far, but um, I, I see potential there. You know, I think Wizard's a smart guy, even though he uh, results don't really show kind mm -hmm. of where he's going. And I think the roster on paper individually, their players look like pretty solid. I don't think any of them are top five in the position, but uh, in a goats meta when it's team oriented, maybe you don't need that necessarily. Exactly. Uh, but coming into the next meta, if you don't have that talent by then, that's going to be really, really, really bad. Yes. Well, let's talk the meta because that's one of the big discussion points, whether we'll see the meta change between this stage and the next one, which isn't for a while now. It's not until June 6th that we get back to our, our stage three. After All-Stars? Yeah, after the All-Stars, which I mean, we could spend some time talking about. It's gonna be fun next week, but uh, also... A lot more DPS for sure. Yeah, no, no tank events. Won't affect sure. league standing. So yeah, right. is there, I mean, Ron, we've been talking about this behind the scenes a little bit. There's a lot of uh, scuttlebutt, some rumors, People, what you're both yeah so maybe we're gonna see a, a, an enforced 222 would yes. this be a good thing would you guys like to see this or would you like to see changes to the heroes to just bust this goats meta that has been so preve uh, prevalent okay so on the count of three you were gonna say either for or against 222 okay and right. I want to see if you line up on this all okay. right fair okay. enough. you want to hop in on this too sure all right one two three against, four. against. Oh. See, I had to be devil's advocate to you because I knew you were going to say four. You know I was going to say four? Deep down, I want to say four too, but realistically, at the end of the day, it... So you're being disingenuous to the camera. You're like, I'm four, but I'm going to argue but, four again. But you have to because at the end of the day, locking two to two, they, yes, Overwatch is a versatile game, but that's what that's what makes Overwatch Overwatch. It's versatile. You have to be adaptive on the fly. And I feel like really restricting to two to two makes it so that the creativity lessens a lot more, right? We'd never get goats if we had a two to two lock right at the start. Maybe for the better. At the same time, though, is it for the better? I definitely would... Yeah. I agree that it See, is for the oh, He's on the fence, he's on the fence. <laughs> so like, I, I think that argument is the one I'm most sympathetic for. That mm -hmm. I do love when Chengdu plays like Triple, for example, right? Yeah. Triple DPS is awesome to watch. And like, as much as Go to Stale Now, when it first came out, it was pretty interesting and mm -hmm. dynamic, right? The problem is our patch cycles are so slow and these like really, these metas stay for like a year. Yeah. And no one wants to watch the same damn thing for a year. It's why we're in esports and not say basketball, for example. No shade on basketball. Basketball's cool, just not into it. Um, <laughs> but like, if we have enforced 2-2-2, people are like, oh, you just get the best 2-2-2 comp. But historically, it's never been like that. We get a lot of variety of switching pairs of tanks out, support switch out, the DPS switch out constantly, depending on what you're doing. If you're diving, if you're playing double sniper, yeah. if you're playing whatever. You're enforced in the framework, but I think, generally speaking, there's more diversity in a 2-2-2. Never as cool as like as GOATS, if you think GOATS or 3-3 is cool, or triple DPS, mm -hmm. never like that out of the box and, and interesting, but it's better than playing the same thing over and over and over and over. Yeah, you could say that, or I could just say that Blizzard do better patchwork because your patchwork sucks. Yeah, if you if you Ooh. also yeah, if you patch faster too, words. maybe GOATS would be dead and we wouldn't like we could have the, the diversity on top of some 2-2-2 mixed. Yeah. I think that's the best of both worlds. But like we've heard Jeff Kaplan say that, you know, we like the idea of 2-2-2, two, 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 right? It makes balancing a lot easier for us. We yeah. can pump out patches so much faster if it's 2-2-2. Two, 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 because, you know, patching for 3-3 for three, three means you either kill the comp entirely or you have to worry about all these other ramifications because of other weird combinations that might happen. But you have to keep 2-2-2 two, two, two as your mandate for league play. You couldn't do it for standard brain progression. It's got to be both. both. But then your, your you player pool, you were telling me, anyone who wants to lock DPS is going to have to wait like 20 minutes to queue for a fight. And that's whereas... why they haven't implemented rule queue yet because they're trying to make sure 
wait times are even. If you're attack player, you'll get mm. a game instantly. If, if you're support, it's like about the same as it is now. If you're DPS, you'll have like a 20, 30 minute w like uh, wait queue because of the most popular. So hey man, go to OCE if you want a long wait queue. 25 minutes for a queue. That's why we don't Ooh. play in OCE. <laughs> no, no, thank you. I'm happy here in NA uh, lining up for that. Are the calls over there like Australian? Like, can you what? understand what they're saying? We got just minutes left. <laughs> okay, okay. What if they implemented like roll queue for certain maps in a given match, or too complex? Only did two 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 for say stage three of OWL and then took it away so that people could play whatever they want. Too wishy-washy. Too uh, wishy-washy. Yeah, I would agree with that. You want to keep the core simplicity, right? Yeah I, yeah, I would agree. Core simplicity is key there for sure. Yeah, I mean Overwatch is already like a hard game for people to get into and spectate. If we like start making these little nuanced rules and intricacies, people are going to be even more turned off. Yeah. And they're already super turned off already if they're like on, you know, watching from ABC on the TV, for example. <laughs> so we don't want to make them any more angry. See all of those tweets, but uh, hopefully we have uh, enlightened you as to Overwatch happenings. Uh, that's all we got for you today. Don't forget tomorrow is FGC Day with Drew and Brody right here on Esports in 30. Until then, you can type exclamation point socials in the chat to connect with us on all of the platforms. Thanks for joining us in Studio Sword. Thanks, Ron. We'll see you all in the future.